You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, in L.A., Woo, Black Lives Matter of L.A. is calling for County District Attorney Jackie Lacey to be removed. In 2012, she became the first woman and first African-American DA of Los Angeles County. Her constituents are unhappy with the job she's doing and her refusal to meet with Black Lives Matter. Today, they went to her home to say, when are you going to address our issues? Watch what her husband did. Right now, get off. Good morning. Get off of my porch. I will shoot you. Get off of my porch. Can you tell Jackie Lacey that we're here? I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. Get off of my porch. Right now. We're calling the police right now. Good. Wow. He pulled a gun and pointed it at my chest. We are here for the community meeting, Jackie Lacey. Jackie Lacey Maybe will you'll go. shoot me in the back. Jackie Lacey will go. Jackie Lacey will go. Jackie Lacey will go. Wow. Well, Jackie Lacey apologized for her, husband, for her husband's actions and explained what happened. This morning, my husband and I were at home asleep. when we begin to hear noise outside of our home. We immediately jumped out of bed and I called the police. I wasn't sure what was going on and let them know that I thought there might be protesters outside my house. <coughs> my husband David and I have been married for almost 40 years and uh, while I was upstairs, he ran downstairs. I could hear him talking to somebody. He came back up later and he said, there are protesters outside the house. And I pulled my gun and I asked them to leave. Uh, up until now, I have not really wanted to share with you what it's been like, but I think it's time because there's a bigger purpose here. As District Attorney of LA County, I have received threats, some of them death threats. I have been followed, photographed while with my family confronted at art, an art museum, confronted at fundraisers, even at endorsement interviews have had people crash them and videotape me. And all of this is because I chose to do my job. In the past, I have offered to meet with Black Lives Matters but I felt it should be either one-on-one -on -one or a small group. They have rejected those offers. It seems like what they like is to embarrass me and intimidate me. My hope is that one day that might change. That maybe, just maybe, if I keep reaching out, that someone will want to sit down and have a conversation that's productive. All right, folks, joining me right now is Melina Abdullah of Black Lives Matter LA. Melina, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, first and foremost, um, we heard you on that video. Uh, you had, I mean, you didn't back down, but it certainly had to shock you to have a gun pointed at your chest. It was traumatizing. 
Um, I've never had a gun pulled on me and definitely not that close before. Um, I'm a mom of three kids and, you know, I definitely thought about my babies at that point and thought, you know, is this how I'm going to go out? This is not what we were expecting. Um, but, you know, we feel pulled to do this work um, because our people are being killed and they're not being held accountable. The police who kill them are not being held accountable. She said that, uh, first of all, there was a forum, community forum Black Lives Matter sponsored. She did not attend. Other candidates did attend. She also said she is tr- wanted to meet with Black Lives Matter, but only with small groups. Can, uh, you, you, how, how do you respond to what she said? So we've been protesting outside of her office for almost two and a half years, and we're doing so in partnership um, in part in partnership with the families of those who've been killed by police. Um, It wouldn't be ethical, it wouldn't be moral, it wouldn't be true to who we are for us to have private meetings with the district attorney who refuses to hold the police accountable who kill our people. Um, So what we've said to her, and I actually had a personal phone call with her in December of 2017, is that we want the families who are there Um, who are in front of her office every single week to have a chance to lift up their children's names. So who would I be if I walked into a one-on-one meeting and not bring the mother of Christopher DeAndre Mitchell or the sister of Keisha Michael or the auntie of Waikisha Wilson and the mom of Waikisha Wilson? Who would we be? And so we said, you know, she's a public official. She has public forums in other communities. She should have a public forum in the black community. And when allies in the Stonewall Democratic Club, which is a largely white club based in West Hollywood, kind of echoed that sentiment, she committed to having a public forum before December 1st. And she never had that. And so we brought chairs to her front door and said, we're here. Meet with us now. Let's have a public forum now. And so, no, a one-on-one meeting, a small group meeting won't work when 585 people have been killed by police in L.A. County since she's been in office. Um, She needs to speak to each of those, um, to every family that wants to come and say, why haven't you prosecuted the officers who killed my loved one? Um, I was reading some comments and there were people who said y'all were wrong to protest at her home. They say office is fine, but the home should be off limits. How do you respond? So first of all, we've been at her office for almost two and a half years. She won't come out. We've written her letters. We've sent emails. We've had personal phone calls. We delivered a petition signed by more than 10,000 Angelinos. Um, We've tried everything to engage her at her place of work. To be very clear, who wants to get up that early and try to catch her before she leaves for work? I didn't. I didn't. I'm, I'm exhausted. But we're at a point where... She's up for re-election tomorrow, and she has not had the community meeting that she's committed to. We also have to remember that visiting public officials at their homes is fully legal. Public officials are supposed to be held accountable to the public. We know that organizations like Code Pink, we know that even um, candidate supporters have had um protests in front of people's homes. This is par for the course when you run for and are elected to public office. And so nowhere in our wildest imagination did we dream that a public official would pull a gun or a public official spouse would pull a gun on members of the public who she's supposed to be beholden to. Melina Abdullah, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a lot uh, for you joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Brooke Thomas, I want to go to you first. You're there in Los Angeles. A lot of black people who are not happy with Jackie Lacey. I can tell you uh, that there are other DAs around the country who are not a fan of her. They say she has not been responsive to the community. You have the former the DA in San Francisco who retires and moves to L.A. just to run against her. 
Yeah, I, you know, and even watching her apology, it was so fascinating. And she's not the only uh, person who is responsible for criminal justice and could be kind of taking a stand and kind of choosing criminal justice reform that doesn't. But watching someone in power complain about being yelled at, complain about people ringing their doorbell, and almost seemingly you're comparing that to people who are victims to over-prosecution, sitting in jails and prisons, when they probably shouldn't, when we've learned from our mistakes decades ago, and everybody who does something wrong shouldn't be slammed with decades in prison. We know that now. And so almost comparing it, her pain to that seems silly and, and seems irresponsible almost for somebody on that stage to say, you know, you don't know. And death threats are horrifying and traumatizing. So I'm not talking about that. Just kind of the other things that she was kind of stacking up to this being yelled at and being confronted in an art museum, it's a privilege when you look at the rate that Black people are imprisoned in Los Angeles County. It's a privilege to be able to go to an art museum, you know? And so that was kind of, I imagine it would be frustrating for many people to watch. And, and then also being able to apologize for something that could likely, if you weren't married to the DA, get you arrested. You know, I, I think that that was just a fascinating apology that probably didn't do her any good when it comes to people who are maybe new to the situation and, and new to the frustrations. Didn't win her over any fans. Rod Richardson, again, this is somebody who has been under significant, significant pressure. Uh, folks say she is not speaking to the issues there uh, in Los Angeles, has not been a strong advocate like many other progressive DAs. In fact, when you hear the names, uh, you, when you hear people talk about black female DAs uh, who are leaders in criminal justice reform, Jackie Lacey's name does not come up, even from well, those I black female DAs. Well, I can I can see why when you look at her record, right? She's she's not for uh, cash bail reform. Uh, she still seems to be in favor of the death penalty. Uh, and we're not talking, as Brooks said, we're not talking about like 20 years ago. Like this is, we know it, it, it's well advertised that the effects of mass incarceration, what it's doing in black and brown communities, what we can do better. And she still seems to be resistant to it. I do want to say, of course, you know, just like Brooks said, if she's getting death threats, that's awful. Obviously, there's no place for that. That's always over the line. But look, if you're a public official and you're complaining about people complaining about you, I mean, I'm, I mean, cry me a river. I mean, you are here. You are supposed to be accountable to the public. It is a hard job. You signed up for it. Uh, and she has a very, very important job. Uh, just, just to remind, just really to remind the listeners, uh, prosecutors, DAs have so much power. They get to determine who they prosecute or who they don't, and they have pr pretty much unlimited prosecutorial discretion. So it's really important that we hold accountable those people who hold these seats of power. And so I'm glad people are doing that. Uh, I'm glad they're pushing. They're making her. They're making her uncomfortable. This is what democracy looks like. You're not supposed to always be comfortable as a public official. Uh, the, the public's job is to make sure that, that you are better. And we can only do that if sometimes the, those in power are uncomfortable because we know if they're comfortable, we're going to keep the status quo. All right, folks, back to that my unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, so a lot of y'all always asking me about terms, some of the pocket squares that I wear. Now, I don't know. Robert don't have one on. Nope. Now, I don't particularly like the white pocket squares. I don't like even the silk ones. And so I was reading GQ magazine a number of years ago, and I saw uh, this guy who had this, this pocket square here, and it looks like a flower. Uh, this is called a shibori pocket square. This is how the Japanese manipulate the fabric to create this sort of flower effect. So I'm going to take it out and then place it in my hand so you see what it looks like. And I said, man, this is pretty cool. And so I tracked down, the. it took me a year to find a company that did it. Uh, and so uh, they make these about 47 different colors. And so I love them because, again, as men, we don't have many accessories to wear, so we don't have many options. Uh, and so this is really a pretty cool uh, pocket square. Now, what I love about this here is you saw uh, when it's uh, in, in the pocket, you know, it gives you that flower effect like that but if I wanted to also unlike other because if I flip it and turn it over it actually gives me a different type of texture and so therefore it gives me a different look 
So there you go. So uh, if you actually want to uh, get one of these Shibori pocket squares, we have them in 47 different colors. All you got to do is go to rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares. All right, so first of all, that graphic is way too small. So uh, tomorrow we're going to run it right down here all across the screen. So it's rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares. All you got to do is go to my website uh, and you can actually uh, get this. Now, for those of you who are members of our Bring the Funk fan club, there's a discount for you to get our pocket squares. That's why you also got to be a part of our Bring the Funk fan club. Uh, and so that's what we want you to do. And so it's pretty cool. So if you want to jazz your look up, you can do that. In addition, uh, y'all see me with some of the feather pocket squares. My sister who is a designer. She actually makes these. They're all custom made. So when you also go to the website, you can also order one of the customized uh, feather pocket squares uh, right there at rollingsmartin.com forward slash pocket squares. So please do so. And of course, uh, that goes to support the show. And again, if you're a Brenda Funk fan club member, you get a discount. This is why you should join the fan club. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. <laughs>